Would you all please be seated? Peers, peers, mom and dad. Today, I have a confession to make to a few of my friends who are here in this chapel. Two summers ago, I invited these friends over to my house, forgetting that I had a dental appointment. By the time I realized that I had a time conflict, it was too late to cancel, and I had to leave my friends at home for a while. Upon my return, I immediately sensed that something was amiss. I found my friends in our media room, looking a little uncomfortable, a little ill at ease. In fact, I can go so far as to say they had never been happier to see me. You see, in my absence, my mom, in her infinite wisdom, thought that my friends would enjoy her favorite movie, The Emperor's Club. She could not have been more wrong. I could tell at once that my friends were in fact bored to tears. So I seized up the situation quickly and helped my friends to make a polite escape. However, while I did not admit this at the time, I must confess now that The Emperor's Club happens to be my favorite movie as well. I relate this anecdote because this movie is what first got me thinking about what it means to live a life of goodness. I was probably no more than seven when I first watched The Emperor's Club, and over the years, many times more. Based on a story by Ethan Kanan, this movie stands for all that I love about school. The camaraderie, the high school pranks, the traditions, the beautiful campus, not unlike our beautiful Appleby campus, the rich moral lessons, and above all, a remarkably passionate teacher. I picture myself in Mr. Hundert's class, dreamily alternating between the female versions of the quiet but determined Martin Blythe and the hard-working and intelligent Deepak Mehta, both characters I would most like to emulate. I sit at my imaginary desk, listening to Mr. Hundert teaching classics with obvious still. There are many memorable moral lessons that Mr. Hundert weaves into his lectures, but the one most poignant to me is this. Great ambition and conquest without contribution is without significance. In the story, Mr. Hundert reminded his students of the importance of making positive contributions to the world. Shutruk Nahante, king, sovereign of the land of Elam, destroyer of Sippar, behold, his accomplishments cannot be found in any history book. Why? Because great ambition and conquest, without contribution, is without significance. What will your contribution be? How will history remember you? Mr. Hundert then went on to explain that Chitruk Nahante had been utterly forgotten, unlike great men such as Aristotle, Caesar, Augustus, Plato, Socrates, Gandhi, Martin Luther King, Madame Curie, Florence Nightingale, Helen Keller, Jane Goodall, and the list goes on. These, in Mr. Hundert's words, are giants of history, people of profound character, individuals whose accomplishments surpass their own lifetime and survive even into our own. Their story is our story. This concept, making positive contributions to society or your life on this earth will be insignificant, is profoundly etched in my memory. The lesson I have taken from this is that to live a life of goodness is to live in a manner so that one leaves a mark behind on this earth by working towards the betterment of society and the greater good. This understanding has since served to guide the life choices I have made. Now, it's probably safe to say we all here can relate to Disney stories. It seems to me that Disney stories have covered every more that a person could hope to learn. This idea of positive contributions is no exception. In one of my favorite Disney songs, I Can Go the Distance, the noble Hercules sings, but to look beyond the glory is the hardest part, for a hero's strength is measured by his heart. These lyrics apply to each and every one of us. We all have ambitions, whether it is to be a doctor, a rock star, a professional athlete, or to simply be a billionaire living on a private island, as my brother would jokingly say. And I'm confident that many of us here will go on to realize our dreams. But 
What is the significance of these accomplishments if it is just that? I believe that the true significance of achieving these goals comes not when they are accomplished, but when you use your accomplishments to affect others for the better. In many ways, we are extremely fortunate that in our Appleby community, we are well positioned to live a life of goodness. We do have tremendous opportunities in terms of volunteerism to make a difference, but only if we choose to grasp these opportunities offered to us. On a personal level, once I understood this concept, I set out to do my best in making a difference in any capacity that I can, in both my everyday life here at Appleby and through bigger endeavors like local and international projects. Yet, I soon realized it wasn't that simple. For a period of time, I had this nagging feeling that I wasn't doing nearly enough to make a difference. I am often in awe of the many men and women that have made a difference to the world. Giants, like Bill and Melinda Gates through their foundation, Lester B. Pearson through his peacekeeping policies, Bill Clinton by founding the Clinton Global Initiative, and especially the everyday people who had made a difference like those featured on CNN Heroes. This, combined with my tendency to dream big, left me overwhelmed as I dreamt of someday making the same magnitude of contribution as these heroes, but frankly, I had no idea how to get there. To be sure, I participated in as much as I could. And you can say I am hard on myself, but all these were insufficient in my eyes and certainly wouldn't get me near the level of significance that Mr. Hundert talked about. I worried that I would never get there. And it seems rather silly now, looking back, but it was at times disheartening to imagine that one's life may, in the end, be deemed insignificant. Even as I plodded on, this worry of not being able to contribute enough to society to make a difference was always at the back of my mind. That is, until I was introduced to Dr. Paul Farmer. I first came across Dr. Paul Farmer when I was reading Tracy Kidder's Mountains Beyond Mountains, The Quest of Dr. Paul Farmer, a man who would cure the world for that extra 1% in Mr. Sampson's World Issues course last year. And as I read about Dr. Farmer's absolute selflessness, I was at first certain that he couldn't be a real person. Frankly, I had mixed feelings. I admired him and his work, but I was also put off because his story and his level of selflessness made it seem even more impossible for me to reach. Dr. Farmer's audacity and single-mindedness in securing better health care for those in desperate need could have the unintended effect of making a perfectly well-meaning, charitable person feel ashamed, even unworthy. I was, in fact, slightly resentful, but that was until the book touched on my exact feelings. And it seems I wasn't alone in imagining, wrongly, that the right thing to do in, with my life was to imitate Dr. Farmer. As I read on, I learned that Dr. Farmer firmly believed that he was a model of what should be done, not a model for how it has to be done. And as his good friend, Dr. Jim Kim, president of the World Bank said, let's make sure people are inspired by him, but we can't say anybody should or could be just like him. From this, I learned an extremely important lesson, and it is, it, and it is simply this. We are all not cut out to be as selfless as Dr. Farmer, or as humble as Gandhi, or as passionate as Jane Goodall. But we are all capable of making a positive contribution to our society in our own unique way. What counts is that we do it and do the best we can. Dr. Farmer's passion and sacrifice simply serve as a model for the way I wish to see the world. This is an epiphany that is tremendously important to me. It frees me from the burden of constantly worrying about how I can achieve what great leaders before me have achieved. I can almost hear Dr. Farmer uttering an undisguised exasperation. I didn't say you should do what I do. I just said these things should be done. Dr. Seuss once said, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. Each and every one of us plays an important role in the community and has the opportunities to live a life of goodness. 
One does not need to be the next Dr. Farmer. One's contributions can be as small or as big as one is capable of doing. They can be on an individual to individual basis, on individual to local community, or even individual to the world. They can range from helping your friend to understand that one difficult math question, to asking someone if they're okay when they're down, to serving breakfast at Kerr Street Ministries, to running a marathon for charity, or to actually starting a charity. What truly matters is that you are making a positive contribution to others' lives. For me, working towards the betterment of the world is the lesson that I have taken. How I will go about making my contribution in a meaningful way, I do not yet fully know. But what I do know is that the seed has been planted by the words of great leaders, and it is time for me to nurture this passion in my own way. Likewise, it is time for a graduating class to go out and to seek our place on this earth. But in the midst of it all, keep in mind that to live a life of goodness, we need to make a positive contribution. Let's not be cowed by the enormity of the task that confront us. Rather, let us each just go out and do it in our own unique way. Though not spoken in this exact context, Eminem's wise words seem to perfectly fit my message of making a difference. Look, if you had one shot, one opportunity to make a difference, would you capture it or just let it slip? Yo. Will you all please rise and sing hymn 575?